Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Receive Podcast. Merry Christmas! Hi. This week we're brought to you by Audible. Is a sponsor? Uh, I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Brandon. We have one sponsor for the, Christmas Day. I'm Gus. It's a the, miracle. The sales team thought we were taking the day off and that we weren't doing a, an episode. And Audible showed up. Was today. like, yes. Yeah, so and then last week, I think they realized it and uh, they had to we, scramble and they got. Do we ever take a day? We off? have never taken a, a, a week off. Uh, the clip show is arguably, although we were on that. We were on that. I mean, and neither and none of us, none of us wanted to take that off. Right. <laughs> it was an interesting idea. You got to try new things. Try new yeah. things in addition. Yeah, it's always important when you create content on a regular basis to give the audience a reason to hate you occasionally. You have to, you have <laughs> look, to do that. I feel look like how that's bad important. it could be, <laughs> and this is what you get. Yeah. What is the worst clip show, like in a TV show you've seen? Like, I, not like the worst explained, like passed off. I think that thing in the Oscars where they make fun of all the dead people is weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Worst, worst clip show ever. Uh, well, like, for instance, like Star Trek, like uh, Riker just got sick and they're like, we need to relive his memories to make him better. So then they just showed. It's like, <laughs> what's, what's the worst excuse for having a clip show are there explained ever, in an like, episode? Do, are there ever setups like that plot wise for clip shows? I always think it's just like, I think so. Hey, we're doing a clip show. No, it's Friends, usually like. Friends had one, right? It was. Uh, By the way, my vlog this week is totally like revisiting the year and talking about stuff. But it's, it's like, like, it's an active look back. It's not Friends? a clip show. But now I'm rethinking it might be a clip year show. at the end, I think, is that's different. Also, I'm wrapping up the vlog, so. The Seinfeld finale turned into a clip show for the, remember the... Yeah. Yeah. They, they had clip shows during Seinfeld as well, though. Yeah. Where, like, Jerry would come in like, oh, hello there. We've had some crazy stuff over the last hundred episodes. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, that's when TV shows were, like, 20 episodes a season. Like, now it's, like, 8 to 10. Well, it depends so, on the show. But, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Big Bang Theory, they're still cranking those out. 22 oh, major network. episodes a season. Yeah, all the primetime Sit, uh, half hour sitcoms. We just don't all watch half hour sitcoms the way we used to. Yeah. Like, that used to be my primary source of entertainment. I didn't watch hour long dramas like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad. Or how whatever. how many episodes are in something like Brooklyn Nine Nine? I season? think they do like twenty two episodes. Really? Yeah, I thought it was tons. Yeah, a lot of times when you, I mean, you go to Netflix and look it up and see. But if you uh, look at the first season, it can sometimes be like eight. Episodes, ten episodes. Yeah, like the first season of Breaking Bad is like that. I think the first season of Breaking Bad is like six yeah. episodes, and then they move to like ten, and then normal full. Episode. If you look, yeah, at, I guess maybe I'm just thinking of non-network TV, yeah. like all the random cable channels or yeah. premium. If you channels. look at Luther, they did six, four, four, two. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking British TV, man. <laughs> Yeah, it hadn't been on the air for two years, came back for two episodes, and then went off. It's a blistering pace. <laughs> He's well, busy. Your interest is busy. Wasn't, there wasn't Black Mirror like that where they had the second season and then, like, the Christmas special? And there was, like, this long gap between them? And also The Office, right? The UK there version was, of The Office? That was only recently. I forget what it was. But one of the people in it was an actor. And they said, oh, I'm just exhausted. I've been in this British sitcom for six years, and we've made, like, ten episodes. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> they needed a break. <laughs> was it, didn't uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm take, like, five years off? Was it only five? I thought it was longer than that. Curb Your Enthusiasm took yeah. off five years? I didn't think, no, I thought it was, like, a year or two. No, you're no, crazy. It's really? been a long yeah. time. No, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Dead rising. Do you feel bad doing <laughs> stuff like this on Christmas Day? Well, I know it's not Christmas Day for us, but I always felt bad. It's like been six years. Going on the internet when I should be with my family. No, uh, oh, no, I feel fine about it. I think all of you should feel terrible for watching no, this. No. I, I, people, people need an escape. They need a. Uh, they need. Yeah, some, they need. Really uh, like they need to hear about Audible. dot com. <laughs> they need. <laughs> yeah, immediately Speaking after. Speaking of escapes, <laughs> immediately after the podcast, just then go and sit in the corner and listen to an audiobook for the rest of the day. Then you won't have to talk to your family. I just some always, people get bored on Christmas. Yeah, I always felt bad like just being on my phone on Christmas, but then I'm just sat there just like. Staring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone else is on their phone. Yeah. I think it's just, Ima- imagine sitting around before smartphones. Like, I, I don't, did, well, I mean, I lived it. Yeah, but it's like you were a lot younger then, but as an adult, being like, yeah. So that, what, are, what are we going to talk about? That's why movies, that summer and Christmas, those are the two big seasons for opening mm-hmm. movies because at Christmas, you know, they put Star Wars movies out at Christmas. There's a reason why they do that. It's, it's a big season. But that's the opposite of summer. Very good. <laughs> yeah, good point. Hey, Gus, write that one down. Christmas is the opposite of summer. But yeah, it's always the family day hey, movies that come out on Christmas. What's the opposite of Halloween? Uh, pancake day. Easter. What is... <laughs> <laughs> but you're saying it's like Christmas and summer as the movie times. Because and people May, are, people are available to go see movies. And, and people are sitting around with their parents. That's Memorial Day summer. 
No, summer, summer I think is like affects children. June, July, July. We, we Gus, work through summer. No. Summer's when school ends. Right. But we work but, the whole time. But you, okay, let me go back to my original point. You're with your family. You're all trapped there together. You think and, I'm with my family on summer? And Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. The other thing we were talking about originally. The opposite of summer, right? See, this is what happens. You get together with people that you know for a long time, and you're forced to talk to them. <laughs> and then you're just like, hey, Gavin, let's go see a movie, you and I, right now. Let's get up and walk out, because this is the only way I want to interact with you for the rest of the day now. Right. I want to go sit in a dark room. You want to see Star Wars? <laughs> I want to stare in the same direction for two hours. I you're, look, always, you're always looking for something to do. Always. At Christmas. Always. But not at summer. But... Okay, listen. <laughs> I don't know why you think summer. You came up with summer being the opposite. I'm saying movies come out in two major seasons. Oh, I, I was just trying to get you to explain why summer is a good time. But for it's movies. three major dates. Memorial Day shouldn't be the same thing summer. as like kids are off from school. Yeah, people just have like time off. The kid thing. People right. have time off. Got yeah. it. All right. I'm saying for me, I don't take time off in summer. Right. Neither do you. You did when you were a student. Yeah. But most people. And aren't. when you have kids, you're looking for something to do with kids. Sure. So you're in that weird like no man's land between being a kid and having kids. That no man's land I call the rest of my life. <laughs> Are you really? No kids? No kids, man. It's okay. awesome. Gavin? Brandon? Oh, I definitely want a kid. I want one, but it's just it's so much money. And, and we really were, not. we're having issues with our, our dogs, like health stuff. And it's like, I can't imagine how hard it is for people who have, like, human kids to deal with that. Like, Your kid probably won't eat lube. Yeah. It's not a lube thing. Uh, like, it's... Like, they have, like, leg- they legitimately have l- pneumonia, both of them. As opposed to illegitimate both- pneumonia? Fair enough. <laughs> what I mean is they're legitimately though. sick. It's not like, you know, one of them ate lube. Like, they, they have, like, legitimate health not grumpy. issue right now. They have pneumonia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did one of them give pneumonia to the other? I don't think that's how that works. No. I, I think probably Vader got something and gave it a penny because he constantly, like, licks her in the face. Because, mm. like, he loves her, but she always just kind of, you know, tolerates him. Is it dog pneumonia or is it just pneumonia that... A human can have the, the dog has like that. stuff like fluid in his lungs, so it's it's same basic, same, same basic thing as when a human. Yeah, but is pneumonia. dog pneumonia different than like people pneumonia? I see what you're saying. Like, can a human catch it? No, I don't, pneumonia is not contagious. You get pneumonia from something else, like, a, it's like a bronchial symptom. infection or something. Yeah. yeah, you get bronchitis and then you you get pneumonia. Yeah, you could spread the disease, the underlying disease that caused right. it. I got walking pneumonia in 2011. How? Ish January. What does that mean? What's the difference between pneumonia and walking pneumonia? I think pneumonia? it just means you're not bedridden, but you have pneumonia. Like isn't that right. just you can just get up? Isn't all pneumonia walking pneumonia except <laughs> like, you're not lazy? No. <laughs> you're not a baby about it? No, there's people that are bedridden because they can't get enough oxygen because pneumonia is fluid in your lungs. This is a really nice conversation for Christmas Day, by the way. Some people have pneumonia today. They do. Chris, Chris pneumonia. Wait for pneumonia. Try walking around and see if that helps. <laughs> see if you've got walking pneumonia. If it out. doesn't, then don't. You know, you do not have walking pneumonia. <laughs> this is, we are not medically approved <laughs> to give advice. Well, surely every disease starts as walking disease. <laughs> like, you get walking AIDS until you die. I have walking death, and then <laughs> that's what I am. I guess if you're hit by a truck, it's not really a disease. It's just kind of... What I'm just trying to think of something... In, like, is there anything that's instant that's not physical? Like an illness? Yeah. That would be great to come home, though, from the doctor and sit down your significant other and say, the good news is it's walking cancer. (laughs) I'm going to be fine (laughs) until I'm not, and then I'll be dead. Everything's good until it's not. Everything's good until it's not. Brendan told me a phrase years ago that I thought he made up because I'd never heard it before. Is it? uh, (laughs) What what is the phrase? Is it a... it is what it is? It is what it is. You never yeah. heard that? We, no, I had never heard it before Brandon said it. This is years ago. It's like six years ago. Brandon goes, what are you going to do? It is what it is. And I go, that's a great saying, Brandon. It is what it is. And he's like, yeah. And I didn't say years, I invented it. I know, but you like, I, we had this moment. And years later, I found out everyone says it is what it is. <laughs> when did you find out about this? I don't blame you, Brandon. I would, I take, I would take credit for that, too. Like, yeah. That's, that's a good, that's a, that's a Farmahini thing. I told Teddy <laughs> until he was five years old. That I invented the color red. <laughs> <laughs> that we didn't have it. The name red? or No, like, just the whole color. We never had it before. Just blood was gray. He asked about blood. I was like, no, it wasn't the same color. Did he ever confront you about it? it he brings it up now as a joke. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you guys remember this. You might not have gone that direction. But just past our office on Slaughter, uh, back the old office, the Ralph Abelanado office, uh, there was a, like a big lot that was all those cedar trees, those fucking oh, nightmare right. yeah, trees. I those. Mm-hmm. And so they cut them off to like stumps. Mm-hmm. And we were driving by and Teddy said, oh, they cut down all the trees. Look, at it's all stumps. 
He was like three or four. And I said, I did that. <laughs> I, I cut down all those trees. I did it last week. And for years, he said, he, he thought I cut down all those trees. He thought I cut down all the trees, and he thought that I invented the color red. How Not at the same be- time. Obviously, that would be way too much. You got to have different parts of your career. How can he believe anything you say? Like, uh, does he? I don't know. I don't, that, I don't encourage him to believe me. Are there any lies that are still currently going? Uh, You know. Life's good. Everything will turn out well. <laughs> Just the hope stuff. Uh, no, they're they're uh, done with like Chris. I don't. If people are I mean, who's. If you're watching the RT podcast, and you still believe in Santa. I'm sorry, there is no Santa. So he doesn't believe in Santa. He's 12. <laughs> Uh, they haven't believed in a long time. I think once you have an older sibling, that's just off the table. For what you. if someone is watching this with their family on Christmas Day and the little young big mistake? No, huge they should mistake. not be doing that. Really yeah. huge mistake. Yeah, the more damage is being done to that kid than just finding out that Santa's <laughs> not real. We already talked about walking aids. Yeah, yeah. well, I think they would have turned it off at walking aids. Santa's not just not real. He's dead. <laughs> He's just he died. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we have climate change. (laughs) He had walking pneumonia, and then then he didn't. He was our frost guardian, and we let him die. And now the the world's going to end. What are the names of the reindeer? Uh, Blitzen? Go ahead. First of all, how many are there? Eleven. I want to say eleven as well. I thought it was eight also. But I think there's one where the name is like, it varies. Like, it used to be something, and now it's something else. And... Cupid's one of them, right? Donner, Blitzen. No. I think Donner's the one that's... Donner like, is it didn't, Blitzen, it was... Comet. So what are they? Go in order? In order? On Donner, on Like from Blitzen, the back of the sled to the front? Cupid, <laughs> like, what is... is Cupid? Cupid's one of them, right? Maybe it's stupid. Maybe it's the one he hates. <laughs> <laughs> Cupid <laughs> stupid. Cupid is, right? Get fucked. What? I didn't say it was. You both. There was a look, Patrick. You have it on tape. I'm there sorry. What's the official source for this? Is this canon? Uh, <laughs> what, what it, is, it is eight named reindeer. Eight. eight. Oh, yeah. nice. Eight named well, okay, reindeer. Okay, go for it. Does that include Rudolph? Uh, no. Okay, Rudolph's so Rudolph. not there? No, Rudolph was like a he, retcon He's his own story. story. He's yeah. a total retcon thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> he's a retcon. <laughs> the, the mythology of the reindeer didn't make sense. <laughs> so when did retcon the reindeer come along? <laughs> they fixed some other stuff. When they did the Rudolph story, it was a new character, but then they fixed some other stuff with the other I, reindeer. The special edition <laughs> looks way better than the original eight reindeer. Uh, Donner on Blitzen, on I think, Comet on Cupid. I think Donner was the one that wasn't cool. Wait, wait, no, no, no. Don't, don't interrupt him because there's that rhyme. Comet on Cupid. I, I'm lost, though. That's it. I'm stuck after that well, one. Just sing the song. I'm trying. Who sings that? Crap uh, Christmas shit. I don't even know which one has all the reindeer names in it. Well, no, you're thinking so of the, what, that's the Rudolph song that has th- all the names in it. What you're thinking of, yeah. Gavin, is Donner and Blitzen used to be called Dunder and Blixem. Right, that was it. And the names got changed at one point. Well, because it's probably not English. And then it was Dunder and Mifflin. <laughs> <laughs> not a very good joke. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> oh, who's after Comet and Cupid? Uh, now Dasher. Now Dasher. That's Prancer. Dancer, now Prancer, Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Dunder, and Blixem. So, Vixen Rudolph is a retcon. weird name for a reindeer. But yeah, it's like, hey, what's up, Vixen? That, How there's you some How monkey you doing? hump in the back of that, <laughs> that one reindeer. It's like Vixen it's, and Cupid. Is this a German? Like, does this, is does this say a German Prancha? Prancha? It or? says that the names are thought to have come from a poem by Clement Seymour called A Visit from St. Nicholas. Someone just found a dude's shopping list. What, what culturally? Like, what is <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking okay, it up. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, as I'm, I'm finding sorry. information, I'm, sorry. I'm relaying it to you. I cannot look it up any faster. Did Jewish people have reindeers? Sorry, I believed in you. What it was each of the candles name? He was born in the United States. They okay. don't have names for the candles. American. Waxy. I would, I would, <laughs> waxy and melty. Wicko. <laughs> Wicko? <laughs> uh, so, you know, he's an American uh, who wrote that poem. Supposedly. Allegedly. All right. Well, I think we've all learned something today. Do the eight days of Hanukkah, do they have a theme? Eight nights? Man, we should have Barbara here. I know uh, we should. Where's Barbara? Anybody she, else Jewish around here? Dreidels? Yeah, no, I mean, like a theme. Like, is there like a... Oh, like every night. One is, is like different. remembrance and one is uh, gratitude or something like that. Hanukkah nightly One's theme. like grievances. <laughs> you know, that'd be an awesome one. I always liked... Uh, Festivus? Festivus, yeah, where you'd air grievances. It's like that's it's, the one that everybody actually looks forward to. Oh, Everything yeah. else is buffers. Well, like, the test of strength. One so. year. Feats of strength. Have you yeah. ever seen the... It's like that movie where they kill everybody, like one day a year. That's a lot of movies. The Purge. That. Purge, thank you. Have you ever oh. seen the episode of Seinfeld where uh, before they cast Jerry Jerry's Stiller dad? as uh, George Cost- yeah. As yeah. Frank Costanza? It's really weird to see like a different actor yeah. in that in that role. There was a different... Wasn't there a different Kramer in the pilot? Am I th- remembering that? Right? No, the Kramer in the pilot. There's the no Elaine. Right. Oh. And the waitress... Kramer's is- name was not Kramer in the pilot. 
Oh, right. It was Kessler. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the waitress is like a character. Yeah. The waitress Yeesh. at the at the coffee at, shop. At Moe's? Is that what they got? No, it's no. Monks. Monks. Yeah. Man, it's, that show, it seems like we're like trying to remember a classic show that's like, oh, it just went off the air and we can't remember these things. It went off in 1999. It's almost 20 years gone at mm-hmm. this point, which is fucking crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it never goes away. No, I like, get it, but I'm not watching it. I've seen it. I watch it. I probably watch an episode a day. I will say when it comes on and I see it, I will continue to watch it. I won't turn away from it. So you just have the TV on in the background? It's just I don't do that. What you're saying, I don't do that anymore. Like Uh, even in a hotel, I don't turn on the the TV and like just go through channels. To me, like actual TV is like the radio for me. It's like I'm not just going to turn the radio on. Have I ever told you about the, 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 the insane thing that Matt Hallam does? Go on. Oh. I mean this is legitimately insane. I must have brought it up before. Could I have a guess? Yes. Is it somebody he does in his office? No, it's somebody he does in a car when we go to other cities and he rents a car. Because I don't drive with him here. Oh, uh, you have told me. Yeah. Yeah. What does he do? He goes, like, we're in L.A., and he listens to radio on the scan function, where it'll go to a station, it plays it for three to five seconds, and then it goes to the next station down the band. So he can find a song he likes? Oh, my God. That's amazing. That's it. Oh, he doesn't ever stick. He just puts it on scan. And that's it. You never get bored. That's it's amazing. lunacy. Look at the face of no, Gavin. Look that's at amazing. That. To me, it's the equivalent of like releasing a load of bees in my head. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would I want? To what is keep that? Think it? Because I think it's like just it's not interesting enough by itself just to listen to one channel. What do you like, mean? Just, and he doesn't want to spend <laughs> yeah, the time well, and like the way like, everyone consumes media is not interesting yeah, no, enough. No, 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 no. But like. <laughs> But, like, if you're at, like, a, another city, you don't really know much about the stations. You're just like, oh, I'm just not going to, like, spend the time committing to one place. I'm just going to go through the whole thing. to this podcast for four seconds and listening to another f- podcast for four seconds and then coming back <laughs> and you've missed the last four seconds? I do want to point something out. Oh, my God. That just last week on the podcast, you were talking about watching a movie through a transparent screen to watch another movie. But I'm not switching <laughs> between the movies. I'm just watching one movie. That I want to watch. <laughs> You're watching two <laughs> movies at once. This is this Brandon is now represents the practical application of your theory, and you see how just insane it is. I will continue no. to work on this theory. Maniacal, psychopathic. There's, a, there's I, a great scene early on in season two of The Wire where, like, one of the the kids who's grown up, you know, poor. He's never left Baltimore his whole life. They're driving to New York to go meet with some drug dealers, and as he's leaving, like, the radio station's fading out, and he's completely like, "What's wrong with the radio? Why can't I hear it?" And the driver's like, because we're leaving. We have to listen to, like, New York radio stations never now. Never been out of range. It's like, have you never left the city before? That's a, <laughs> see, but that's a, that's a really great writing tool that says so much about the character. You get that mm-hmm. in that moment. It's a unique way to say it. As opposed to crossing a bridge and the character saying, I've never been out outside of Baltimore before. <laughs> you know, it's just like, that's what I think some of the people had the problem. Miles in particular not to put words in anyone's mouth, but that was his big problem with the Star Wars movie is how much it held the audience's hand. You know, we talked a little bit about that on mm-hmm. the, the spoiler part of last week's podcast. Kids like it. That's right. That's right. Kids like Star Wars. Yeah. I like Star Wars. I like Star Wars. That was great. That was fun. Um, Porgs were cute. I liked them. Oh, the little thing that... I, pre- uh, I prefer Porgs to Ewoks. Why don't they just yep. make new a new round of Furbies that are Porgs? You know what they should make? I wish I could license something from Star Wars because I would totally make these. Lightsabers? No. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> that'll never I'll think Marcus never can stop. make it and I'll post it on Christmas uh, day, today, potentially. Uh, I, I'm going to cook a Cornish hen, a small little oh. bird, <laughs> and then get little straight legs to, like, attach to the bottom of it. Like, they have the little straight porg legs. Why don't you just use attached legs? Like, because they don't, they don't, they don't get the full bird, dude. I don't, I'm not going out and hunting... With my bird dog. You couldn't find a chicken tonight? What's that? They don't also go straight down. They come out at an angle. If you try to put them They're straight down. They're different looking. Yeah, they would it pop out. It looks fake when Chewie's holding it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he no. should. Uh-huh. We're getting great spoiler stuff here. Yeah, yeah. Does it yeah. weird anyone else out to eat a rotisserie chicken? Like, I like my chicken dismembered. <laughs> I like it dismembered. <laughs> I don't like to go at it you don't as, see, like, the whole chicken. You don't want to see the shape of the chicken. No. It freaks me out. Well, you, got, you got to appreciate where your food comes from. I appreciate it. I just don't like that. Just, it just doesn't work for so me. So spit roast must be a nightmare for you. What's that? Like, like a, a pig. pig. Rotating pig. <laughs> when, when, do you, when do you interact with a rotating pig? That's rude. Tons of times. When? It's when was the last time you saw a rotating pig? It's not like, as often as a rotisserie chicken, but I mean, you yeah, see just one. Yeah, go to like any sort of festival, outdoor fairground, or like... I got one for you. Can school. you eat fish that has eyes? If they leave the fish head on? 
No, but I don't eat fish. It okay. makes me nauseous, the smell of it. Really? Yeah, when I was a kid, my uh, grandma took me to like a... Shit. You're going to make fun of me? What's a fish? <laughs> no, no, no. What's the, what's Look what I've fish? done in that, Brandon. What's a, <laughs> what's a fish slaughterhouse? SeaWorld. <laughs> that was so quick. Uh, a, a canary? No. A cannery. Cannery? <laughs> God damn it. Canary's a bug. Delete it. Delete this portion. No, it's good. Oh, Keep canary. It. I, I don't want to eat a whole canary. It just freaks me out. <laughs> Fuck. So your mother took you to a canary? Or no, your grandmother my grandma took, took me to, to a fish slaughterhouse. I don't know the term for it. And, uh, oh my God. It just, it she got me... off her job at the factorial. <laughs> <laughs> Took right into a shit. <laughs> this is a canary shit. She, why? Okay, wait a minute. That's First fine. of all, I, I deserve we're, we're ignoring I deserve the, the we're ignoring something this. bigger here. Why the fuck did your grandma take you to a cannery? Like I've never thought. Let's go to the fishmonger with she my was, kids. She was watching after, like she was watching me because my parents were at work because they worked for a living. So she just and stopped into the cannery. She had errands to run. Yeah. What and Aaron took that? her to the. I assumed to buy fish. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't go to the fucking grocery store. No, this is like a. They lived out in the country, like a really rural area. But they had a cannery. Yeah, because it's it was it's Louisiana. Like they're by the water, so you just go in there and buy <laughs> can. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> they're by the water. People in rural areas go there's, and buy. There's what? probably tons of people selling fish everywhere. Then, where? and that's where she goes to buy it <laughs> at a cannery. A cannery. <laughs> a cannery. Like, why else would she be there? Because it's a manufacturing plant where they process <laughs> fish and put them in cans. That's why they call it a cannery. Okay, well, that's not it. Like I don't know what to call it. It's a fish slaughterhouse. Wherever the fisherman take the fish. Did she take you to a? It's a butcher shop. What's she, a butcher shop for fish? A fish market. She took you to a, it's fish, not a market. fish market. Like it's, it's not a market. Seattle with the dudes and they're throwing no, the no, fish. No, no, it's not a market. It's it's like if you go to a, a butcher shop. It's like a butcher shop. What's a butcher shop? It's, it's a meat market. You, you, no, but it's not a market. It's like one person's business. You walk in. Fishmonger. It just sounds like a fish shop. <laughs> okay, fish. Well, fish shop. Does that sound also a butcher? No, that's like where you buy. That's where you butcher. buy like worms and crickets for catching fish. Like a bait. A shop. bait shop. Oh, that's a bait shop. Did that's you go, a better word. Did for you go to a bait shop? No, it wasn't okay. a bait shop. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So you went from bait shop to all the way you're like working the line Look, at man, the cannery. My grandma brought me someplace that smelt like dead fish. How big was this place? Was uh, it, it was bigger than big. It was like a warehouse. Really? So it's as big as the studio where we are. Yeah, like I'm telling you, it's I mean, that is, about with cans It of was fish. literally <laughs> next to the um the dry, giant lake. I don't know what it's called next to um Cecilia. For anybody who's like Louisiana. Like it's a fishing industry. It's like, okay, okay, I'm gonna look this up. What was that lake called? Lake Shishishmi. I don't remember the name of the lake. It's near. Uh, it's it's next to Cecilia. It probably feeds into the Gulf of Mexico, but I don't know if it's technically classified as the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, let's see. Big lake there. Don't eat any fish out of the Gulf of Mexico, by the way. It's gross. It, it's basically the lake between Baton Rouge and lafayette although not technically lafayette fish have plastic in east. them too <laughs> east of lafayette okay well you're not gonna find nope. look for lafayette i got you, I got you. He's, he's on it I got to see, it. is it lake Bigu? what are you looking for you looking for i'm gonna find whatever this building a is fish building from i'm pretty ago. sure it's in catahoula it's been 30 years ago guys. fish catahoula, slaughterhouse. Louisiana. let's see if fish. google maps can find fish slaughterhouse nope can't find fish slaughterhouse Fuck, how do you spell So Catahoula? what happened? She took you there and it smelled like fish? Yeah, it was it. horrible. And it just made me it just made me vomit. And then now the smell of fish just makes me gag. Oh, it made you vomit? Yeah, same thing like whiskey. I smell whiskey. I want to gag because that was like the first liquor. Like I broke into my grandpa's uh, liquor cabinet. Or he gave it to me. I don't remember. A my grandparents him. were very cavalier with raising me. <laughs> and, get him uh, drunk and take him to the cannery. It made me sick. And now I smell it. My body's just like repulsed by it. Whiskey. Whiskey. Any kind. Bourbon. Scotch. Uh, not Fireball. Of course, it's not a real drink. Can we get All I'm saying it's whiskey, whiskey on this podcast right now? Can we do what? We yeah, bring it. Let's see. Yeah. We have whiskey. We have whiskey behind me. Because I, I know it's a very strong smell. Do, do I have whiskey behind me, Gus? Look. Yeah. Yeah, hold I on. I think so. Do you, want, do you want to try this, Brandon? Yeah, sure. And then we got a bunch of raw fish. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. I was reading that. I don't you... fish, fish with eyes. I don't like that as much. But the reason I don't do it is because it, it, I run into bones there. And I mm. fish bones are like something that are... So as not, a kid growing up, fish bones were a much bigger problem in my life. Yeah. And they went away. So when I get fish that has bones in it, it feels weird. Yeah, like, whenever I used to have salmon as a kid, there'd be bones in it. But now I've, I've never found a fish bone 
since I was a child. We've uh, we've yeah. genetically engineered fish to have weak bones. <laughs> We're better at fish deboning. Yeah, the, have you seen the video of the 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 thing the, that sorts what? tomatoes? Oh yeah, or like oh, flings them out the way if they're the wrong the green color. Ones out of the way. It's so That's cool. Crazy. It's pretty nuts. It's like optical recognition, but on a time scale that you can appreciate as a human. And yeah, and they, they have to really slow it down to be, yeah. for yeah. you to even be able to tell what's going on. That'd be so cool. That's so neat. It, it's basically a yeah. conveyor belt that automatically detects green tomatoes and kicks them off the belt. Uh, the, super fast. Uh, the tomato cannery. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, if you eat... Do you smell a Freud? Or sure. Makers? Both. Makers. Let's see what the difference is. Yeah, this is makers. So we got a... Pointing me this decanter... Ugh, that looks like cloudy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> There's probably some uh, at the always open bar. Probably they restock them. Someone on the over there. someone on the website was trying to figure out how much money we spend a year on alcohol. The, we, 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 had that, that we had that year end presentation last week, and one of the slides said that Rushdie consumed twenty thousand bottles of Topo Chico. You want, to, you want a glass in twenty seventeen? Wouldn't it be better yeah, if you had a machine it. then that does it? You can smell can it you make? Okay. Can you just it's spend just, Topo it's Chico? just mineral water? It's just fizzy oh, water, yeah. right? That's really popular in Austin Christmas for miracle. some reason. So we just need a soda stream, right? What are you doing? Oh, you're gonna no? I'll, I'll that give me the like bottle. Ceremony. Is this a cork oh. or is this a cap? Ah, it's a cork. It's a nice sound. I'm gonna do that again by the mic. Oh, I wasn't. Oh, nice. No, go again. Go again. Go pull straight up. Yeah, that's, hey. that's good. Hey, a little knows. ASMR from the RT podcast. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be bad. Is it two whiskeys? Do you want me to put it in the glass for you? I put it in yeah, glass, you put it in the glass, it'll make it way worse. So yeah, put it in the glass. I'm gonna end up drinking. <laughs> you put it in the glass, it'll make it way worse. So yeah, I'm gonna make uh, Ellie bring me over some clear ice from the uh, from the bus. bus? Yeah, from the bus. my mom says <laughs> the place that I went to was called Vic Nairs. Vic Nairs. and what is it? I ask your mom, what is this place? And she can just say she'll say it's a whatever a fishery. fish slaughterhouse. Fishery? Aquari- she probably took you to an aquarium. It was not an aquarium. <laughs> well, the they don't have aquariums said. in Catahoula. They just got one traffic light not long ago. I like how that – the aquarium is ridiculous, but the fish warehouse is not. Can, can I drink one of those? You, you want gonna one? Make, you going to make drinks? You gave me fucking side eye for drinking a beer at the start of this podcast. You did. And you're here now asking for whiskey? Yep. Um, yeah. You reminded me of the I, time. Can I be a dickhead? Can I ask somebody rinse these out just because they're like been sitting on the set and they're all dusty? Can you rinse uh, three of these out for? Me? You want one? Gus? No, I got a beer. I'm good. Okay, thanks. Nick. Don't worry. I'm. I'm. You're. You're nothing. I'm a real jerk about cleanliness. No, these are dusty. With, with I mean, these have been sitting yeah, there for I, a while. I'm. I'm always asking him to make sure. I was convinced I got a sore throat because a glass was not cleaned properly during Heroes and Half. Right, he points out there's some. I still talk about it to this day. All right, I'll be right back. Do you still make that? Yeah, we just uh, filmed our last episode a couple of weeks ago, and I think I don't know if it's out yet. It may have just come out. Mm. But yeah, you say your last episode? for the season. Yeah, very careful. Thank you. Last episode of the season. Was it 24 episode season? No, it was not. I think the last episode was like almost four hours long. So if we broke up the podcast into 24 episode seasons, what season are we on? Uh, like uh, 20? <laughs> so I've been, uh, I'm off mic so much today. Uh, so I have been uh, testing the new video site that the tech team is working on. How is it? Uh, it's it's good. Uh, I don't I don't want to steal anyone's thunder by talking about uh, features it has that I know some of the audience is curious about. Um, so I'll let the tech team do the announcements on that. But we're you know we're in the middle of testing it. Uh, we're in beta inside internally. We're gonna go to beta publicly I think pretty soon. And uh, what were we just talking about that reminded me of that seasons. Oh, so seasons. One of the things is porting all the episodes of all of our videos. Over to the new one, and the way we handle everything, and so you can search for it and everything, is seasons are tough. And they didn't understand why the seasons for some shows were listed as the year, and for some they're listed as a number. Mm-hmm. Like for Red versus Blue, it's season five, but for the podcast, it's season 2016. I said, well, that's all the broadcast shows because they go. All There's year no long. stop. Yeah. yeah. Although for some shows there is, like always open. I now there is, yeah, yeah, but. Like for the Rooster Podcast, church. it'll be season 2017, episode 350 or something like that. Right. You know, so. Because, yeah, you don't want to break it up and make it like season 2017, episode five. Yeah. Because then there's already an episode five. There's going to be a million other of them. Yep. So searchability is a, a big issue just because we have so many videos. So the idea of how you flow and navigate through it 
And there's so many other video experiences on the market. Are we going to have to skip back and forward buttons? I don't want, I want to talk about specific features. He's, because it's not my thing. Like, it's, it's, it's a tech team that's working on it. And it's like, I, I get, people get mad at me when I say someone's going to an event, you know. Okay. So. I'll just say this then. I hope we have skip back and forward buttons. All right. For the, like, jump 10 seconds ahead or back. Yeah. Yeah. I awesome. found out that our, uh, speaking of stuff that we make, <clears throat> I found out that our uh, unsubscribe is A-OK. Is it? Thank yeah. you for checking into it that. Is, uh, it is the, the easy kind and not the jerky asshole kind. So oh, I know Brandon, thank you very much. <laughs> I know that Brandon is not going to drink this, so I'm just going to use two glasses here. You, you got some ice on the way? Fuck off. Does anybody else get like uh, robocalls like all the time? Yes, all the all time. The time. It's, all, it's the only phone calls I get now. Yeah, it's, it's insane, right? Also like, fraud calls on my credit card. Does oh, it, yep. Does got it bother got another credit card turned off today. My, I got one turned off on Thanksgiving Day. Yep. Does it bother you when it asks you to unsubscribe from the call, um, you know, press, like, whatever number, and you press it, and it just hangs up? Don't press it. Yeah, don't the, press anything. Because they, they confirm Now they know you you're exist. listening to it, right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I do know. Anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here, here's it, it's the thing. bad no matter if what. When you but answer it defends me. It's phone, just like, apologize for it. Your phone rings. It's a number I don't recognize. That's weird. I'm going to answer this anyway, because it could be important. So, answer the phone. Hello. If there's a pause, just hang up. Yeah. If there's not a person there saying hello to you, I don't know why the technology is such shit, but basically what it does is there's a robot dialer in a call center that dials phone numbers, and then when it hears a connection, it then rings the phone of someone at the company to then answer it. Like, they don't even dial out. They just sit there and wait. The calls are just connected all day They just sit there and wait at their station in the cubicle at the call center, and all of a sudden their phone rings, or it's what's what whisper tone sometimes. It just tells them, incoming call. And then it connects it. You're like, hey, how's it going? But if you have that pause of like three seconds, just hang up. Every now and then. It's a robo dialer. Every now and then I'll get a, uh, a call from somebody pretending to be like from Apple, like trying to get access to my mm. computer. And I can't resist. Like I spend like five or ten minutes on the phone with them just fucking with them. And my, just being like, I can't. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to do this. Like, and then I start asking like. Do you think maybe my computer could have messed up because I've been going to these websites and I start listing listing all these really explicit porn sites, <laughs> like and just until so they get like frustrated and then they start fucking with you back. Yeah, I uh, I had someone call supposedly from the IRS telling me how much money I owed the yeah. IRS. And I was like, yeah, wow, wow, really? You don't say. This seems really legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> Gift cards is how I'm going to pay for this. Wow. <laughs> I will probably in my life, and I don't even know that it's their fault. But I will probably in my life never, ever, ever, no matter what happens, I will never buy another Ford vehicle because I bought a truck in 2009, and then the five-year warranty on it expired in 2014. Yeah, the math adds up. Ever since 2014, I've gotten two to three calls a month from extended warranty companies mm -hmm. wanting to extend the warranty mm -hmm. on my car. I don't think that's Ford necessarily. It's probably not. It's right, probably public record. I've had this. Yeah, it's yeah, public it's record. I've had the same thing with my car. But it makes me honestly. It's like I'm not saying that as like a justification. I'm just saying I know that I won't buy a Ford. It is re all the conversations I've had about Ford and warranty, warranty Ford, extended warranty Ford, and it's just like I'm just done. But, I just I don't ever want to hear the word Ford again as long as I live. Sure, I, tell you, I had the yeah. the dealership I brought I bought my car from did something really shady around RTX time. I may have mentioned this before, but. uh they uh, sent me an email like, hey, this is confirming your, your service appointment for your car on yeah. this day. And I was like, I didn't make one. And then I looked at the name. I Googled it. And it was like their, what was it, what did they call it? Their business development committee. It's like someone whose job is just to get you in there to try to sell you a new car. It's like they made an appointment for me to come in so they could try to sell me a new car. Yeah. I was like, I didn't, I didn't. And then they call when I missed it. And they're like, we saw you didn't make your scheduled appointment. I was like, I didn't Fuck make you. that fucking appointment. Fuck I, you. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I didn't make that. I don't want to yeah. go in. I, I don't have a service appointment. Don't make, trick me to try to come in and sell me a fucking car. Is that how you sell a car is through making the person feel irresponsible? Because right. Someone tells me I missed an appointment. I take that very seriously. It obviously works. Like it works on some percentage of people. Like maybe they say it's only a 5% success rate, but 5% is still... It's significant if they're selling cars. Has, has anyone, it's like spam email. Has anyone broken into your car before? And like, uh, anything? That's an interesting question. Yes, someone broke into my car and stole a laptop uh, a few years ago. I never talked about it. Mm. It was like eight years ago because it had like RVB stuff on mm. it. And I was just like, e -e -e. but I don't know. Really I had a car stereo time. stolen 15 years ago, 16 years ago, maybe. Yeah, 16 years ago or so. Where was your car at? It was parked um, at a parking garage by our old office at 7th and Brazos. Oh, so yeah, downtown, right? Mm -hmm. I could see that. I my car was parked inside the parking garage at my apartment in the protected area, like behind the pedestrian gate, mm -hmm. and it got broken into. 
and my radio, which was like a nice like Pioneer Apple Play radio, got jacked. And fine, what you steal the radio, <laughs> you steal the radio. But he took my AC unit with it. AC unit? What? what? The, like the, the little compressor? control module. Oh. No, sorry, the control module <laughs> that adjusts the AC. And yesterday it was raining, and the entire inside of my window was fogged. And I like I opened my windows in the hope that would like you know just even it out, even it out. But like I didn't have a defroster, so I'm like, do you remember an Ace Ventura when his like heads out the window (laughs) so he's driving? Yeah, that's how I'm going down the highway. And then I realized that he also fucked up my airbag, and I was like, oh my god, my airbag's not working. I realized that the indicator on the dash. Yeah, I didn't notice like the airbag like uh, light was on, and I was like, holy fuck, I got to get out of this car. Isn't that passenger airbag? No, this is driver's. Why is there a light for your driver airbag? It, well, I think you want to know, know if that's messed up. Why is there a light for the engine, Gavin? I just didn't know. I thought the light was just for the passenger, so you could put a kid there. I think there's there's multiple lights. They have uh, they have. I don't have a car. I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking questions. Oh. I'm learning. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. When you turn on the car, usually all those lights, all those indicators come on, so they can show you that they're working. So they tampered with like everything in your car. No, they just, they just stole your radio. I, I feel weird defending a thief. How long ago did this happen? I found this yesterday morning, but okay, well, they, assume, they didn't I need to take the AC the pr- thing. I assume in the process of stealing <laughs> your radio, it broke or right. whatever. Like, it, it falls off, and they just, like, they grab it. Or why like, did they why, – why? There's no use to that. They're just – It's a it's, 2009. It's probably already broken. Right. It's they just leave broken. it in the car. Oh, you, you mean they you took mean, it? You're mad they took it. They're mad they took it. What are you, you going to do, rewire have to it? it? Yeah. yeah. I mean – Who's the, who steals a radio? Let me, let me ask you. No, was, it's, was a, it's a nice radio. It's like radio? an aftermarket like, radio. Was it like all in one, like one was resting on top of the other? Um, yeah, but they're still separate components. Like when they put in the new radio. This guy isn't like going in like with, you know, professionalism and going, okay, let me get this. And, oh, I'm going to move this out of the way. <laughs> There's still <laughs> stuff in my car he didn't take. Like, like he went through my. Remove the sticker. I don't want to bust the warranty on this. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't have the right size screwdriver. Hmm. I'd be considered if I was stealing stuff from people. I'd be like, I don't need well, this. Well, most of the time you realize when they steal something out of the car, they just smash the window, right? So next time how it did, rains. How did they get into your car? How did they get into your car? I think, uh, I, I think they had that device that it's that long, flat. What do they call that? Well, well it's not a rod, I guess, but it's rod-ish. Okay. It's and like a flat rod. Flat rod. Flat <laughs> That's rod. the best I can do. And I think they shimmied it. In between do my door. Slim Jim. Slim Jim, yeah. Slim Jim. I call it Slim Jim. And um, is that the scientific you jimmy name? You jimmy and it's slim. You jimmy yeah. a slim? Yeah. It's, you use the slim thing to jimmy it. And, uh, it, it, and the, the thing I'm taking away from this is it's like the 10th time that there's been a, a car has been broken into at my parking garage of my apartment complex. Someone had their bike stolen and they refused to put in cameras. So I'm going to start stealing stuff. No, that's not the solution. No. It is. like wh- so then it's $200 it's, to get a camera. If I was the apartment complex, I wouldn't put cameras up either. Why? But, so why is it their responsibility? It's their garage. And I, I have to park on this super they, they, creepy they bottom they level. They provide you a place to put your car. They make no other assurances beyond that. Why? Why, why would they, they have to? That's not their business. If it's you want security. them to secure it, I, I, then I would charge more. I'd be like, oh, you want the, the premium secure parking? That's an extra 50 bucks a month. Look Dude, they charge Old enough, man. man. Here. They I, charge enough. They should you, make it safe. It's, 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 a, it's one of those fancy. It's like it's like an Amlian. It's like, you want to be fancy? So it's like a parking garage, not yeah. a parking lot. No, it's a parking garage, and it's built into the complex, and yeah. they they took away our park. I can't park on my level where I live. I have to park on the super creepy Bottom level. You can pay extra to park on your level. I would. That's, that's the Gus Rolla way. It's just so expensive. I charge Wait, for every, I would, charge, paying, for, I would paying, charge for everything. Like at ISP. I'm paying five hundred and fifty dollars extra a month because I'm going month to month on my lease. Ugh. And then now I have to pay this deductible. Oh God! And it's the just dogs have and money, the dogs. Yeah. I have no money. Parking, okay. parking can be such a nightmare too. And when I actually lived in San Francisco, she lived with like five other people, and they had one parking space Ugh. for it, but it was in the garage. And even their parking space was on the lift. So they had the, the person who paid to have the parking space. They went in, and it lifted the car up. And then somebody else in one of the other units came and parked below them. Oh, my God. So awesome. they constantly had to communicate with the person with whom they, they were below <laughs> or above. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was just like it's too much. It's there's too there's much. a person there's on new... the bottom pay extra? I would, I would assume so. Then I would you assume so, too. You don't have to deal with that person. But I guess then you have to deal with them whenever they want to get out. Yeah. There's God, new tough. I don't know which one's better. It's horrible. I think the bottom's better. The whole way around it was terrible. There's a new condo high rise uh, being built in downtown. No parking garage. No parking. 
It's like, if you want to live here, don't have a car. Like, that's the general, like, message. That's future-proofing. I think that'll be the way the buildings are in, like, 10, 12 years. We'll be making more and more buildings like that. I really do. And we'll have these a lot of these buildings that have parking garages for the first seven to eight floors, and they'll be just like, all right, now what do we do about this? Retrofit. Well, Gus worked in a parking yeah. garage. Yeah, that, I mean, I, so I know that they can do that. Yeah, they can retrofit. I, I, I worked. I was at that job when my car got broken into. I'm surprised but there's yeah, not. So they, they, oh. they they retrofitted an office into a parking garage. It is like walled off, uh, like sections of it, and like some of the rooms are like super sloped because mm-hmm. that's where the ramps were. So they just made it interesting. Yeah, next yeah. to my desk was like a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that place we used to go eat on Congress that was in the garage? You had to go burger? into the parking garage to go to the restaurant. Mike's Pub. Yeah, Mike's Pub. Is that still around? No. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, Megan Castro used to work there yeah. while we were all uh, working at Congress. We might have just run into Megan there well back in the day. Yeah, it's so weird. Sherry's think, stalking us. I think Mike's Pub closed shortly after we left downtown. You ever go to Garage Bar? Mm, I'm, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to say no. Yeah. I remember I used to call them all the time to ask what's special if it was the their version of the Philly cheesesteak that they yeah. made that was so fucking good. And they would just be like, no, man, people always ask about it. No, we'll tell you when it's on the menu. It's like, maybe put it on the fucking menu. Right. You know, if everyone's calling in, you're about to go to business. Just, I'm, I'm not in the Make restaurant biz, thing. but here's, here's some maybe free consulting. Maybe it's seasonal. Everybody likes this thing. Put it on your fucking menu. Don't make it the one day of the week special every other month, essentially. How can we increase our sales by 700%? We've mm. got to stop answering these phone calls <laughs> asking about <laughs> Philly cheesesteaks. Um, here, let me read this. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Audible. Thanks to Audible for supporting Rooster Teeth. For a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial, go to audible.com slash RT ooh, or text RT to 500-500 to get started. That's a new one. Uh, Audible's selection of audiobooks is unmatched anywhere. Millions of Audible members across... Uh, millions of Audible members access performances by amazing narrators, and Audible also has exclusives and original audio shows. Uh, you can listen to the new Andy Weir book, Artemis, uh, who's the author of The Martian. Uh, it's a thrilling story of a heist set on the moon, and it's narrated by Rosario Dawson. Uh, you can use Audible's Send This Book feature to share a book from your library with anyone. If it's their first time accepting a book to this feature, they can listen for free. Uh, to get a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash RT or text RT to 500-500 to get started. That's audible.com slash RT or text RT to 500-500. Like we said, it's a good thing you can do on Christmas or during your holiday break or New Year's or whenever. Get started. Free. Free stuff. Um, yeah, hopefully this, I should look it up before I yammer about it. But the World War Z audiobook, if it's they have it. Audible, it's, it's, I recommend that I think like every other time we have Audible as a sponsor. Yeah, I've got that in my Freaking library. Freaking great. And it's, it's, it's really great. Did you see that? During the Game Awards, there was a trailer for a World War Z video game. No. But it looks like it's based on the movie and not the book. That makes sense. It's weird to me. Well, yeah, the, the whole franchise is so weird to me because the movie – the movie's weird because the movie has such a great source material to work from and decided to completely throw it out. Like the reason why the book is so good is because it follows to me the Romero-style zombie and mm-hmm. takes it to its extreme. And then shows how, like, the zombies wearing down people who are just trying to survive. Uh, and unlike Walking Dead, which then becomes more so about the other weird people who are alive, like, it goes the uh, Dead, Rising. Dead Rising round. Yeah. yeah, like, only the people who were crazy survived, or they all went nuts because of it. Um, yeah, World War Z kind of remains about the zombies. There's PTSD stuff and stress and things like that, and there's some really unique stuff in it. But then for the the movie, they were like, ah, well, let's just make them super fast. Was it the what? one Tom Cruise was in? Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. It also, another weird thing about it, it is the highest grossing Brad Pitt movie of all time. Really? Yeah. Isn't yeah. that weird? That's a weird fact. Like, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie actually don't have huge hit movies. They're two of the most famous people in the world as actors and a- actor and actress. But they don't, like, her biggest thing is... Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Tomb oh, Raider. no, Tomb Raider, yeah. Tomb Raider, yeah. Before, uh, before I think World War Z, I think Mr. and Mrs. Smith was his, big, his biggest yep, box I'm office. Looking, I looked him up right now. Yeah. It's World War Z, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Ocean's Eleven, Mega Mind, and Troy. Yeah. I think, um, uh, what's his name? Johnny Depp was like that in, before he made Pirates. What like, did Troy He's done a ton of movies, but uh, like none of them were like huge commercial. Yeah. Lifetime, Successes. it was 133. What? 133 million. That's what Troy made? Yeah. That just seems like... An opening weekend now, right? Mm-hmm. It's that crazy. was in 04. What was the opening weekend of Last Jedi? 
Uh, I think two twenty. What worldwide? Let me look. Worldwide. Did you get into Dead Rising Four? I did a little bit, but I just you like the first no, one. Last right? Jedi Domestic I, is two twenty. Domestic was two twenty. Yeah, and was four, it, foreign was four seventy three. I mean, foreign was two fifty three for a total of four seventy three. Wow, wow, that's crazy. That's that's amazing. What's Star Wars? I yeah. saw it twice in the first week. You know, I mean, every other movie should just kind of like take the week off when it comes out. Like, yeah, like, it's like <laughs> Jumanji was. You can the have same, this one. <laughs> the same weekend, I think, wasn't it? Was it Jumanji? Yeah. The the Rock one didn't that come out? No, yeah. I think that how did, did it? Okay. I think the that's second the Chris, place movie was like Christmas Ferdinand, Day. like that animated movie by the way, Bull. That Jumanji movie looks totally fine to me. Looks fine. Yeah, Here's looks why: fine. you and I don't care about the original Jumanji. I don't give a fuck about it. But there's people who grew up and they watched it a thousand times on VHS tape or whatever or on DVD when they were kids. And so when this new Jumanji comes out, they're like, it's ruining my childhood. It's not ruining anything I, for me. I, I have no that. nostalgia for it. I, I hate, hate that movie. I, I thought what, it was dog shit. What, the Robin the Williams one? Yeah. <laughs> it's garbage. <laughs> it's good. The third is way better. Way better. I, I, I was curious after uh, looking up The Force Awakens the other day and thinking about this Disney acquisition of Fox. I wanted to look at the top ten biggest opening weekends and figure out how many of them were Disney films. Ever. Yeah, top ten opening weekends all time domestically, not looking worldwide. Opening weekends are different. That's different than highest grossing mm-hmm. because Titanic never really made an extraordinary amount of money in one weekend. It just never stopped making money. Yeah, like, Titanic's like, not in the adjusted top for un- Adjusted for inflation? Uh, is this adjusted? No, this is not adjusted for inflation. Oh. Avatar. If it's adjusted, I would say MGM had a— Avatar's got to be in there. Ton. It's not? No. Highest grossing movie of all time, Star o- opening Wars. W- opening weekend. Last Jedi, okay. Last Jedi opening weekend has to be the highest. Spider-Man? Last Jedi's number two. Uh, Sp- Harry- Spider-Man? It's got to no. be like superheroes and Harry Potter and shit, right? You should yeah. find, find the, the, the Harry Potter list. It's kind of hard. Harry, po- Harry Potter and the glowing oh, stem. Of the ten, <laughs> seven of them are Disney Studios. Three are not. It's Star Wars The Force Awakens, Star Wars The Last Jedi, Jurassic World, The Avengers, Age of Ultron, Civil Captain America Civil War, The Beauty and the Beast that came out this year, Iron Man 3, <gasps> Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, and the Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Yeah, but you need it. You That's need to not good movies. Look at list. the inflation adjustment list. This just <sighs> well, like nah, Gone with the Wind. I'm not, no. uh, what's okay. the point of that? You got to put. You got to leave the past behind, dude. You got to leave the past behind. I don't know what the Let point it die. Is. I <laughs> there you go. Let it die. I I I don't think you should adjust for inflation. But then what's the Ever? point? It's just understanding that like means, that these that, were big movies in the last couple of years. That means that in the future, like hundreds of years from now, when someone you know sells a company for four trillion dollars. Yeah, it's going to be more impressive than someone who did it now for, you know, a billion. Or it, and it will be because that'll be current and people give a shit about that. Like no, we no, talked yeah, about like East India Trading Company is worth more than fifty other companies. You're like, okay, great, what an interesting fact. Let's move on to talk about anything else. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, like saying, the, the Louisiana history purchase. shit. History's boring. Well, well when you're talking about war. rankings of movie openings, yes. World War Two was way I'll, better than World War One. I'll appease you, Brandon. <laughs> the highest grossing movie since the year two thousand, adjusted for inflation, is number eleven on the list. It's Star Wars: The Force Awakens, um, adjusted for inflation, nine hundred sixty-five million dollars. That's the only movie that's come out since two thousand that's on this list. Yeah, like for the that, inflation just yeah. 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 If I say you, isn't it crazy that Russia has, and America, we have enough atomic weapons to destroy the world three times over? And you say to me, well, you know, horses really revolutionized the way that Genghis Khan conquered the world. What? Like, okay, fucking great. I don't give a shit about it. I'm talking about atomic bombs. You know what I'm saying? What's your point? You want to adjust for inflation on horses? It's not, it's not the money. same thing at all. It's about wanna, money and money. Do you want to adjust? Do you want to adjust for inflation for horses? It's not the same thing at all. Horses are not atomic bombs. Yes or no? No, they're not atomic bombs. Well, there you go. I'd also like to point out that we use horsepower. <laughs> it's nothing to do with anything. We use horsepower to measure torque and cars and stuff. You can call it whatever, though. It's still just it's, a measurement. Is one horse actually one horsepower? We talked about the power horses of one horse. Take. Right. <laughs> it's three dog power. <laughs> All I could think of is how many horses it took to drag the DeLorean. How many horsepower is a horse? <laughs> <It auto completed. laughs> I'll be honest. I don't even know what measurement horsepower is. Is it power output? Is that what it is? It's equal. Is okay, it maybe wattage? A horse can Kilowatt? produce 14.9 horsepower. <laughs> What's the point of this then? Well, it's like dog ears, isn't it? Wait, so what is a horsepower measure? What is horsepower? 
Oh, God. Um, like their internal belief in themselves. A unit of power Force? equal to 550 foot pounds per second. 550 foot pounds per second. Yes, yeah, so it's. Per second. So is that velocity? And that's ex- it's torque. acceleration. Torque? Right. I don't well, know. I said we've, torque. Reached, we've reached the limit of my mechanical. 745.7 watts. So it's watts. So how many horsepower? To everything? How many horsepower in a forty watt light bulb? Oh, translate. Horse- yeah. No. What, what does that mean? Not That's... you. This thing. This, this, this is so confusing. I don't know. Like the 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 reactors they put on there were like one point nine trillion watts or something. They just turned on. Oh, in, in uh, Nevada. Solar. It's like how many horses is that? Like how many? I feel like how many if, solar horses? What if you put a horse on a treadmill? How much power does it take to run the treadmill under the horse? At a full gallop. Yeah. What if they do that little prancy walk that they do sometimes? <laughs> All right, Brandon, why don't you sniff this whiskey? Oh, yeah, Jesus. have a so I'm, this I'm is LeFroy. It from here. You can't not smell it. It's LeFroy. Although, somebody, did I tell you about the time somebody. Oh. <laughs> get the mic on. He looks like he went white. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're going to make me sick. Are you going to sip it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, give it, to, give it to Gavin. You going to drink the rest of it? Oh, I don't want this one. <laughs> His dogs have walking pneumonia. <laughs> I'll drink that one. I don't give a shit. Here, give it to me. You want to switch? I think Brandon's dead. It's fucking alcohol. It's how you clean everything. I'm not a germaphobe. Where'd you get the glasses rinsed then? Oh, fair play. <laughs> nice point. You make a good point. Yeah. I, did it for, I did it to be polite to you. Okay. Oh, thanks. James Watt invented horsepowers. What? The term of horsepower. He, James Watt. <laughs> when you say Watt, Watts. He, he, I think he may have also done that too. <laughs> He's he making shit up at the end of his career. was working with ponies lifting coal at a coal mine, and he wanted a way to talk about the power available from one horse. He found that on average, a mine pony could do 22,000 foot-pounds of work in a minute. He then increased that number by 50% and pegged the measurement of horsepower at 33 because the pony's not a horse. So it's an approximation in one minute. based on ponies? It's an arbitrary unit of measure that's oh, really down. He measured the 220 but pounds the- per, mi- per minute and then said, went through all that measurement and then goes, and eh, a pony's like, what, like half a horse? So <laughs> double it. But then yeah. that's just- or 50%. It's like one, one a pony is... Well, that'd be two thirds of a yeah, full two horse. Two thirds of a full horse. So, yeah, it's so, like one third less. So than a horse, horse exerting one horsepower can raise three hundred thirty pounds of coal one hundred feet in a minute, or thirty three pounds of coal one thousand feet in one minute, or one thousand pounds thirty three feet in one minute. But, but that's only on like that only applies to like the first gear, right? Like the gear with the highest torque. No. What? What? Maybe I don't like know. Go- Sometimes you guys are savants about something. Oh my god. Couch. One, this is what Gavin said, kind of. What? One horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts. So if you took a one horsepower horse and put it on a treadmill, it could operate a generator producing a continuous 746 <laughs> watts. Really? I can run my PC of a horse and a Uh-oh. treadmill. So they still use horsepower today measuring supercars and stuff. Well, yeah. Car. But it's always like precise. It's like 165.4 horsepower. Yeah. So it's like, it's, just come up with a new measurement. I agree. We're yeah, basing but- it on... Two thirds of a horse from <laughs> ages ago on, on, on a pony lifting coal. Two thirds of a horse adjusted. Do we for inflation for, for <laughs> horse? Yeah, inflation from pony to horse. Do we even know like what kind of ground this pony was walking on? Surely oh, that makes yeah, a difference. Right. Was it uphill? Did it have horseshoes on or pony shoes? Yeah. I hope. I hope that bullshit. when they fucking like test Fahrenheit. a Lamborghini, <laughs> that it's not like a treadmill or some kind of advanced meter that does this. They just hook a rope up to the back of it and have it pull coal up a shaft, like a mine shaft. <laughs> That's literally how they test horsepower. That would Surely, be great. Okay, so if a, if a car is 500 horsepower, how many horses would you have to attach to the back of the car, pulling it in reverse, for them to cancel each other out? If I attach 500 horses to a wagon, could it go 300 miles an hour? I don't think so. <laughs> like, it's like, is the whore, each horse still has to go 300 miles an hour. But they're right? sharing the load. Like, they're not, it's not a speed competition. It's not going to make them it, faster, though. I think it means that you're more likely to hit the max speed with a higher, like a more, uh, a heavier payload. Why isn't planes on bird power? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to pick a specific one, like crane power or something. Right. Yeah. It's a it's, horse. This, is this horse is a specific. thousand Canadian geese power. We'll do seagulls and we'll inflate to geese. And oh, right. It. I mean, I think I say saying horsepower in a car commercial because car commercials are sexy. Horsepower sounds sexy. You don't want something technical. It's like twenty horsepower. It's just traditional. Yeah, that's it. it. It's stupid. Yeah, we need get a away, new measurement. What should the name of it be? 
Ramrods. Vrooms. Vrooms? Yeah. 60 vrooms. Not sexy. I just go with thrust. Because <laughs> you make got, that face whenever you say yeah, thrust? Yeah, because it's got like, a good thrust. marketing marketing p- appeal to it. Thrust. Fuck factor. <laughs> <laughs> You're selling muscle cars, dude. Right. It's got a fuck factor of 3.7. <laughs> <laughs> See? Great. Yeah, I'd buy this, that. <laughs> this has 3.6 cubic poundage. <laughs> That's how it go with. A Some, penile enhancement factor of two. It's gotta have a it's gotta have like an active component to it. Thrust. That's what I do. Because that's why they, they measure the thrust of uh, rockets in horsepower, right? I mean, the, when they try to equate it to something that people can understand, they're like, that's 12 trillion horsepower. They, they but do, I mean, like, thrust is a not, unit of measurement. Don't they use Newtons the for that? Hmm? You Newtons? still need a... Is that the unit of measurement? Newtons for force? I, dude, I don't know. Isn't that for gravity? Where's Trevor? He's an aerospace engineer. Get him in here. He's at the damn Achievement Hunter Christmas lunch at Fogo that I couldn't go to. <sighs> You can go to it. You want to go to it? No. <laughs> I'd rather come and do this with my friends on Christmas Day. You want to go to Fogo to Chow and eat a bunch of little cheesy bread balls? And then I will take you to Fogo after this if you'd like. Yeah? Let's do it. Let me check my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Just have it read it to you. So uh, so I, I, we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago about how it seems like. <gasps> you okay? Yeah, it's just it's really extreme. Isn't it? About how it seems like iPhones get slower the older they are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we speculated that maybe it's just new software and whatnot. Uh, the website <laughs> Geekbench did some testing, and they found out that as the battery in an iPhone degrades, the CPU throttles itself down. Oh, that makes sense. Why? In order to try to preserve the battery life as long as possible. So you don't have to go in and get the battery replaced so, as quickly. Yeah, so apparently that's what they said. If people are having sluggish phone performance, they can get the battery replaced, and then it starts acting fine again. Yeah. How much sense. is the battery replaced? I don't know. Because normally it's not something Apple does. They just tell you to buy a new phone. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you smash your screen and then do express replacement, you get a new everything. Imagine if we didn't have rechargeable batteries in our phone if we had to, like, <laughs> open the case and put in double A's. <laughs> we would hate our phones so much more. God. Do you ever have or a, just watch batteries. You had to, like, stack, like, five watch batteries in two columns, and then uh, I would just – I would never use my phone. Uh, never, Do you ever, ever have a Game Gear? I no, did. I didn't have a Game Gear. Man, they took six double A's and they lasted like what, like two, th- two or three hours. hours? Yeah, it was not I much. Think the Game Boy was like four double A's. Yeah, but it lasted yeah, it forever. Lasted forever, yeah, yeah. It didn't didn't have a backlight. I love home automation, but I do find now that I have to charge things in my house that should never have to be charged, and it's just like oh, like what? I got myself involved with this uh, window blinds. I have, to oh God. I have to charge my window blinds, which is just like... We were talking about this the other day. That's a, a huge design flaw. Who's ever going to do that? What? Charge them? Yeah. No, that's fine. They, the, the charge lasts a long time. This is the ultimate first world problem. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, <laughs> charge my blinds. No, I'm really... Like, but somebody, somebody did say one time that uh, they said it must be 2016 was when they wrote this because I'm having trouble today because I forgot to charge my watch and my book. And they can't do it. So... <laughs> I saw, I'm just saying the amount of stuff we have to charge in our lives now is you have to charge a book. It's how crazy. Does, how does a watch keep time? There's gears in it that have quartz, and then they they're precise. And because I know about you, you always see quartz and like <laughs> it literally said nothing. Swiss quartz and all that stuff. What the Christ is that doing for the time? I have no idea. Like who dug quartz out of the ground and goes oh thank god oh it's now perfect we can, like every now, second is a second <laughs> now we can tell time i don't know and you still need a battery or you still need to wind it what yeah. is the quartz how does it come into play don't know this is something don't by the way cameras that i've wondered at several points in my life and it's like it's like oh i wonder how that works but never enough to google it here's it, it, doesn't it quartz falls, like pulsate at a certain what does rhythm it mean, pulsate? you know what i think actually i think quartz is the glass that you look at the watch face through what? I don't know that has anything to do with the mechanics of the I thought it was like a lightsaber. Like it's a crystal inside. There, there's You're something right? like that because I think that's how film cameras used to work. Like actual like, it's movie film inside cameras. Inside a quartz is... clock or watch, the battery sends electricity to the quartz crystal through an electronic circuit. It is like a lightsaber. Up. The quartz crystal up. oscillates at a precise frequency exactly 32,768 times each second. What? How much? 32,768 times What do you mean second. it oscillates? Like it wibbles around? It vibrates back and forth. It has that in parentheses. I didn't think I'd have to explain that, but there it is. Yeah, I think that's how the... Why, it was just, like, how could it... How, why is it your watch like... Oh, shit. It's probably just tiny, very minuscule. Yeah, it's very, very small. Just enough to make the gear go... Is that... Like how much, though? Like could I see that 30, with a high-speed camera? 
Or is it but my watch doesn't have a battery in it. It might be so small. My dress watch does not have a battery. Do you have to wind it, though? Yeah, it's a spring. Is right. that where and it gets? Then there's the spring, spring replacement. That does what? Oh, but you're, you're right. Then I assume that's gear-driven. So, so like, like, it has gears that rotate at a certain rhythm. One that causes Based on the spring. No, there's no quartz in it, right? What? There's no quartz in I don't have my watch on me. I'm wearing, my, I'm wearing my, my fake digital watch. Today. I would assume that then there's no quartz in a spring watch, and that's just gear-based. Yeah, because the gears are specifically designed at a certain size where... It will always go at the same pace. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, was I, mean, getting, least, I was getting grief on Twitter because I was – sometimes when Apple released a new product, I'll like – if you can customize it, I'll spec it out to the maximum just to see what it would cost. Yeah. And the new iMac Pro was like $13,000. And I was like, damn, that's a lot of money. But you could buy it with le- less than one Bitcoin. And everyone took that to mean like I'm going to buy this thing. <laughs> For sure. And then I was getting defensive. It's like, hey, hey I'm not going to buy it. And also, B, why are you annoyed if I would, was going to buy it? Like if I earned the money – I, like, I didn't ask you for it. You didn't give me the money. Why are you commenting on what I can spend it on? Like, it's I, I, I never school. asked anyone for money. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like you know, it's almost like Twitter is a vacuum, and the easiest thing to fill it with is complaining and criticizing. Well, there's just a comment. There's always a blank box where you're supposed to type something in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Um, have you ever seen that uh, picture of the globe where it's got a circle, and it says more people live inside the circle than outside of the circle? Oh, and it's a small circle, and it's a it's a relatively small circle. I sent it what? to the control room. Confusing me a little you guys bit. Can bring it up. So they drew, they draw a circle on a part of the globe. Oh, I see. On the actual this, globe. Yeah, and this covers people. oceans and everything else. Right, it's not the real people. one, like a model of the globe. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's fascinating. Oh, yeah. it's bigger than I thought it would be. So it's like you know India, China, uh, Indonesia. I mean, some of Southeast Asia there, and Japan. That's crazy. I think the coolest thing about India. That's a weird way to start a phrase. Um, like the subcontinent is like actively in a massive collision, right? And like it's it's almost like a like a a car wreck, like just in super super slow motion. And like every year, the Himalayas are getting like an inch taller. I think it's the Himalayas because the India subcontinent is still actively just colliding with the uh, I don't know the Eurasian plate. Does mm-hmm. the airbag work? <sighs> They don't have an air conditioner. Uh, their radio's gone. It's a, it's a, it's a whole thing. I don't know. It just, it's, I don't know. It starts to make you think about how there's still jobs at the Canary, though. Isolated our <laughs> sense of time is versus, you know, not even the universe, just Earth. Never mind. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> no, it well, is. I, it, it is interesting. You, you it's, gave it's, up on it. You did give up on it. I know. I mean, it's, there's always the risk. You sound a bit like you're on drugs or you're a hippie if uh, you start thinking too deeply on a comedy podcast. But I'm, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. Well, the I had to uh, pull rocks out of my yard back when I lived in Buda. Cause I, I remember like, that. I'd try to pull rocks out. i do it all the time. Would and you, you get rocks? a massive rock that looks insignificant because you kind of poking out of the ground. It looks like it's about this big. And then you discover underneath it's this massive rock. And so try to get it out and move it. So you, I'd use like levers and wedges. I had this big pole that I would use to try to get the rocks out. And then when one would slip and the two rocks – would grind against each other on this small scale. It was this huge, like, I could feel the shudder right there. And I can't imagine the equivalent of that of, like, a continental well, shelf. It's, yeah, it's like, earthquakes. It's earthquakes. Like, going yeah. like this, yeah, exactly, going like this, and then just going, eh, like, shifting a little bit. It's just like that grind is that. If that happened, like, all at once, it would just, there'd be no way we could survive, you know? What, what were you moving the rocks for? I was trying to get them, I was, I was trying to, it was kind of just, I lived out in the middle of the country, and I was trying to, like, get, you know, the Kids, I had kids at that point in time was having babies, so I wanted a place for them to play that was like, like more long and tough and stuff. more longish. Yeah, it's fair play. So it wasn't a big area. I wasn't trying to do the whole thing, but I was trying to do enough. I was thinking about that place the other day. I was uh, like trying to Google Street View around in there. Oh yeah, and I, see if I could, if I could uh, if I could see it. Is that I, your beautiful farm? It wasn't a farm. I didn't live on a farm. Ranch. Like, where did you get that? Ranch. What was do you want to call ranch? it? It was a house. It's a house. It was a house. House with a lot of land. I had about five acres. There you land. go. I had about five acres of land. Yeah, it would have been tough to. Start a range career. <laughs> I, honestly, I didn't even realize it was that big. I, 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 I say five acres. I think it was like 3.8 acres. Mm. What, what makes it, it a farm? Uh, like if, yeah, if I have a when house, is a garden because it could become a farm? I guess like, if I, I have a cow and I sell the milk, is it now a farm? That's dairy. Yeah, that's a farm, though. Dairy farm, yeah. No, you're dairy. Mean? Dairy's not a farm. Yeah. yeah. No. You don't think cows are on a farm? What do I, think, think? I think there's cows on a farm. Yeah. But I think if you're selling milk and that's all you're doing, you're dairy. But that's what farming is, isn't it? It's like if you sell meat, something and if you just it. sell meat and that's it, you're a ranch. If you just sell fish, you're a canary. <laughs> dairy farming is the class of agriculture for long-term production of milk. Google what makes a farm a farm. Dairy farming. There you go. 
I guess I, I, uh, I imagine well, general like term tractor, and farming. Like dairy farming. <laughs> I would if you if you if I said Wait, to so, someone who was from Wisconsin and they had they grew up on a place where there were stables with the little booths or whatever the fuck they put the cows in, and there's 80 cows. The cow lounge. And their they, their job was to milk them all the time, but that's all they did. And they said, I told them they grew up on a farm, not a dairy. They go, no, I grew up on a dairy. That's they dairy. say a dairy a farm. farm is an area of land that is devoted primarily to agriculture, agricultural processes with the primary objective of producing food and other crops. It is the basic facility in food production. So what is a, a, dairy, what is a farm that produces crops? If a dairy farm is produces dairy, what is a crop farm? Farm. What, what is that? Just a farm, right? Farm. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay. I when I say farm, we all think of the same thing. When, when you say farm, I think of animals. Yeah, animals. Nah. What do you think of? Like corn? Apparently, rows of corn. They, they, they are um, considered specialized farms, are dairy farms, poultry farms, and pig farms. There we go. So it's like a, a subcategory. Yeah. There you go. So See, when, mean, when you when you picture a farm, there's no animals on it. Nope, it's the wheat <laughs> and Superman. <laughs> Superman is in there somewhere. And yeah, that's the farm to me. Weird. Yeah, it's rows. Just picture a shit. Those, it's got to have those rows. And some I just farms. Picture old McDonald. And this is interesting. I never thought about this. Some farms don't use the word farm at all, like vineyards and orchards, which are also farms. But they you would say like peach a, farm, a specialized well, that's grape a, farm. It's an orchard, isn't it? What? A peach farm is an orchard. Yeah, you wouldn't say that, though. Oh, right. Yeah. right I guess you're saying. People like orchards. You would say the apple farm. People like vineyards. <laughs> grape. There we go. Grape farm. Grape, grapes, it doesn't seem like, when I see vineyards, it doesn't seem like they're making enough grapes to make all that wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's most like, of them are underground. Just one little it thing of like grapes, bunch, like a can big... you mush that into yeah. a bottle? Is that one bottle? Oh, I don't know. Because it seems like, the way I, when I juice an orange... I need like a dozen oranges to get a twelve ounce glass of orange juice. Well, the the ratio of like usable orange to the rest of the orange is, I mean, grape only the skin is the shit you throw away, right? Do they do what? What do they do with the skin? Well, they just stamp on it until the juice comes out. Do people still stamp on it? Can you still buy wine that people stamp with their feet? Uh, ask the grape lady. I don't know. Who's the grape lady? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> how, how popular is wine in the U.S.? Uh, I think Not many I people. Kind of, like, I mean, no, I mean you're gonna I eat it every now and then. I, no, I, mean, I saw it, it at a restaurant different. a few days ago. <laughs> All in, compared to like other spirits, day, like unrelatable. I mean, you're talking about how much can you produce, but if the demand here is not the same as it is, you know, in obvi- like other countries, I don't think it's a like general staple the way it is. But there's tons of people who drink wine. Do, I'm, but I'm, like, I, your entire point is: Do we have enough grapes for wine? It's dependent on like, well, how popular is wine? I wonder if I'm just saying when I see. A vineyard that I know produces a lot of bottles of wine. I'm like, they need way more grapes than what they've got. As well, of, the, as of 2013, wine was grapes ages ago. <laughs> as of 2013, the U.S. is the largest wine consuming nation in the world. Wine, wine is Better. grapes adjusted for inflation. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty good. That's, that's actually really good. <laughs> that's all that is. That's what Gavin is telling me. <sighs> I wonder if the movie Sideways had a big impact on like people's consumption of wine. I think people who are what are wine enthusiasts called? Wine assholes? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think people who are into wine, they have been around forever. I, have you ever known somebody who's gotten super into wine or super into a thing? Why is it only some things you can get super into? Like people are into cheese. Yeah. Why, is, why are people not into cheeseburgers? That'd yeah. be mine. Oh, man. I love that. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm into cheeseburgers. Can I have a cheeseburger of the month club? <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> I mean, people aren't into horseradish. Right. I'm, Although I love horseradish. I love horseradish. I love horseradish, but it's like. Horseradish is horseradish. You're not going to go to a, not like different. You're not going to a tasting. Yeah, right. You're not going to do that. Or it's like this is a, a special horseradish from this region. Like horseradish is so good. If you went to like a horseradish vineyard and tried to like knock on the door and say, "I'd like to tour your <laughs> your, your, your radish farm," they would probably shoot you with a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> do like, get the fuck out of here, you <laughs> Wenophiles? Oenophiles or wenophiles? Vinophile? Or, or wine? A vinophile with a V? O E N O O E N O. Yeah. The fuck root is that? Yeah. I, I'm sure. I assume Greek. I'm sure Sideways did a bunch for that. Uh, yeah. For the no, wine. I'm sure the Merlot. Yeah. First of all, who the fuck well, watched Sideways? What Sideways? Sideways, Sideways was really good, popular. Yeah. Thomas Hayden Church. Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. Some great film. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the. the Nobody guy watched from, that movie. It was like an art house film. The guy no, called well, Spider-Man. It grossed seventy one million dollars worldwide. Just for inflation, <laughs> <laughs> domestically. <laughs> Opening um, weekend. You hear the conspiracy theory that uh, all the diamond companies that put money into a bunch of Hollywood movies to, like, make diamonds. Diamonds are a sham. Diamonds are a racket. Diamonds are a fucking so what I'm saying, though, is, like, they used one of the things they did is they used Hollywood movies to make diamonds seem like the ultimate jewelry. Like, apparently, before, like, the, 
mid 20th century. It was all about sapphires for engagement rings yeah. or some shit like that. Yeah, the, the stones have changed over. But the it years. was just they used movies to like change the culture. Like yeah, they use they they use movies and then they hoard all of them and only let a few out. That way they can artificially adjust, control the price. Even right. Though they use all the time and like tools and right. stuff. It's the, I think it's the De Beers Corporation, just like it's cartel keeps right? all yeah. of them right, and then just like gives some out to try to artificially make it. Work and more. it's also like everyone's okay with that for some reason. It's just like that's an, it's, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's a global monopoly. Yeah, there it's a accepted fact basically that they do this, this. episode of the podcast brought to you by the De Beers. Why do they let the uh, the the shitty ones out? The ones that are have the big black chunks in them. Oh, that way they can make the other ones seem nicer, right? Did you you bought an engagement ring, right? Yeah, you bought an engagement ring. Yeah, okay. No, nope. we got suckered. Nope. Yeah, I had to. Just can't fight part, the part system. of the system. So yeah, you yeah. haven't. No. So on average, we we've each done one. <laughs> <That's enough laughs> <stuff to do. laughs> the, but when you go and shop, they go through all this stuff. Like there's in- occlusions and clarity mm-hmm. and all this color. stuff. Anti-aliasing. Color. Anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing. You gotta, you gotta adjust the sliders until, it, until it matches up with your wallet. That's two diamonds, and when you can't see one of them, you've got a good diamond. <laughs> this is what I did. I went to a diamond place, and I was like, this is how much I'm gonna spend. Show me the range in this price, or show me the rings in this price range. And they're not bullshitting. I mean, it's literally in the tag. And I just looked and say, alright, that's the one I like the most. Done. And it's a nice ring. And older people always give younger people the same advice. Don't buy the ring. Just do something nice. Or buy a fucking fake one that nobody's gonna tell the difference from anyway. Honestly. Honestly, you're never you going like to get like a never going to be a situation like where you're going to cut through glass where you're going to need to escape a car or something like that. You're never going to need an actual diamond for Also, a brick will work. Also, a brick. Get one of those orange hammers. I'm get one of those? for a ring. Just put a piece of brick in the ring. <laughs> People have different things that they like. You know the person you're with. I, if, if I got Paula a fake diamond ring and she found out about it, no, no, it, it's not. You're not. Tr- I'm not saying tricker. Oh. I'm saying you guys. The advice I give to the couple is: look, if you're going to get engaged. Just go get a like a fake ring if you're gonna do it, and then don't throw a big wedding. Just have a yeah. party. Save the money for the for the ring and for the wedding. Yeah, and buy something else. Buy if you attach the word wedding it. to Allow anything, right. it multiplies the price by ten. If mm-hmm. you go into place and go, I want a cake. It's like that's fifty bucks. Say I want a wedding cake. That's five thousand dollars or whatever they do. <laughs> Can you just go in and ask for a cake. I would like it's a dress. A- I would like a wedding dress. No, a wedding dress is five thousand dollars. Everything is five thousand dollars. Can you just go in and say, "Oh yeah, I just want a regular cake." And like, what do you want to look at? And just kind of like describe a like, white a wedding cake. cake. Yeah, just like different layers just- and a little ornament on top of. <laughs> Too yeah. Not until they put the third tier on where they're like. Hang on a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> what is this? God damn it. You're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's like, you just take the money, throw a party. Everyone will be super happy. And then off you go. It's like Live a, your life. Save your money. Save your money. That's a practical thing that makes sense. Listen, in, in practice. All the older people say it. Would you say it now after you've been married? Would you give that same advice to somebody younger? I say and they know would, the person you're with and understand, you know. Some people really care about the diamond. Yeah. They, who cares about it? Just girls. No, everyone cares about it because we all do it. You know. Well, right, I don't. I, mean, I care about it because she cares about it. I mean, right. I don't care about but it. Isn't like your yeah. advice to like just have a better wedding or like nobody takes it. the advice. I'm saying all the older people have the advice and the wisdom. Nobody takes the advice. I, I, don't have, I never have taken the advice. You also can't keep a wedding or a vacation. Can't keep a wedding or a vacation. Keep it. Well, you can keep the ring on your finger. Okay. Every day. Well, I'm a, I'm a believer in experiences more than things. Like you said. So you'd rather have a, a memory than a, an object. Yeah, I can't yeah. deal with you. I'd rather have a vacation than a ring. Also, it's like oh, are, if that's yeah, the I case, mean, why are we getting all these like passed down rings? You know, it's there should be like this army of rings being passed down. <laughs> yeah, to what happens to rings when people die? Nobody keeps a shit. That's the thing. It's like your ring. You yeah, well, actually, yeah, because it's always like this is my grandmother's ring. Yeah, they, it was they, like, where's where's like hers? That? And why isn't it like a big tube of rings at that point? <laughs> it's like, do they bury it with people? Like, can we go and just start grave robbing rings? It's sure, called, Brandon, called let's robbers. go do yeah. that. <laughs> we'll Why stop not? breaking into all the cars. We'll rob some graves. If you use a metal detector, it's fine. Brandon, you can't smell fish. You're going to dig up dead bodies and you're going to be okay with that? <laughs> well, if, if, you know, it would save me the cost of a ring. Wow. You won't buy a cubic zirconia or whatever no. it's called, but you'll dig up a dead body and pull the ring off it. Yeah. You're not worried she's going to find out about that? I mean, if it's a nice <laughs> ring, it's a nice ring. It's one of those things. It's like it means more because look at all of the trouble I went into it. This is not an experience oh. like I have. like if I go to the, the place, I'm like, look, I want a blood diamond. I can't I want to know to that that diamond. I don't want to dig up a body. I can't relate to it. I don't relate to it either. No one has ever purchased me 
something of the value of a diamond ring, I don't think. Like personally purchase something for me. So there's a whole part to that experience which I'm not sure about. Does every lady, lady. secretly go and have the ring checked out to make sure it's real? Like what? where would you go to do that? Would you go to a jeweler? Yeah. Jeweler can test that. Well, see, I, I like specifically – A rock butcher? <laughs> <laughs> I, I specifically gave her the paperwork. Basically everything but the you price. Forge that and I was like, look at all of the it's, – it's so, uh, they have all these bullshit metrics because, you know, if like I actually got it for real, I wanted to know it. Can I have you tell you about the guy I, that, that convinced me you can fake anything? Do you ever the guy that I went to school with? Uh, he was a junior at UT and this is a long time ago. But this is a long, long time ago. Are you thinking about a statute of limitations? Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. And I'm not going to say who it was. There was a person that I know. I said it was a guy. But he was a junior. And uh, I found out that he had transferred from a smaller uh, like rural college, like a community college. Uh, or junior college. It wasn't a community college. It was junior college. And he told me, he goes, yeah, he goes, yeah. He goes, I only went there one semester. I go, and you're a junior now? How, how did that happen? And he said he got his transcript after a semester of work. He had like a little bit more semester. Something like 18 hours in, you know, eight. You should have 15 after one semester and uh, 30 after two if you take a full load. And he had about 18, 20 hours somewhere in there. So he got his transcript to transfer the classes into UT, and then he got it from the registrar at the junior college, and they got this – the official rubber stamp seal and put it on there. So he takes the transcript with the rubber seal stamp on it, and he goes to a rubber stamp place. He goes, can you make this? And the guy looks and goes, yep. So he typed up a whole new transcript, gave himself two years of coursework. And then stamped it and turned it in to UT, and that's – and he got – I can't believe they gave him a transcript. They don't just don't mail it. No, no. I've, I've gotten my transcript before with facility, the official facility. stamp on it and everything. And the, yeah. There's no, they like, don't put in a sealed envelope? School to school. just. And it seems like almost like a crime, but what did he do? He just – Well, Saved I feel like – thousands of dollars? <laughs> he, didn't, he just didn't educate himself. I feel like the stamp make is definitely to blame there. They shouldn't be re- recreating stamps. No, it's, it's like charging for a wedding cake. He's like, oh, it's for for a transcript? Yeah, just uh, multiply that times 10. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. I can make that, sure. So he made the stamp and stamped it. Well, I couldn't go – I couldn't bring my passport to a stamp maker and be like, uh, hmm. replicate what the customs agent stamps in my passport. Also, do we have any illusion the person who gets it at UT is going to go, wait a minute. That's not the Paris, Texas junior college stamp. It's like you can put it literally like – you can make something that looks like 80% like a, a is pig. The, it's a big smiley face. It's like, it's a, like a little star with this. Good job. You sound like a guy like a, like Papers, Please, the game, like the passport. Just Gus's like favorite game. Stamps. Love that game. It's an amazing game. So good. Yeah. I, I don't think, think you can fake anything. I uh, – I know. Why? We – um and when I went to school, and I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but you have like the six-week – official reports for your grades and then three weeks in you have like your uh just progress like where you are at that point and i stopped did doing homework at some point and so the my grades in like the middle of that six week six week period were pretty shitty but i know like i could get them up so instead of showing my mom my actual progress report i just went to the um i went to the library in the school photocopied my progress report, cut out numbers that I could find on it, and then pasted it onto the original progress report, photocopied that, and was just like, I have three more weeks of, like, smooth sailing. See? Forgery. It's, and, like, a, big part of, uh, yeah. it's a big part of your education in America. You but, like, now everything's electronic. You like, your, your parents get money, right? No. I like, think oh. if you try to, like, scan money, Digital like, ones will, like, yeah. Adobe Photoshop, like, tells you you can't do that. Get out really? of you. Yeah. yeah. So isn't it like a lot of authorities too if you try and print money? I think also if you – like printers have unique identifiers in them that you can't see with the naked so eye. So we got to get rid of all the shit. I we think there's like get rid of it. a sequence of five yellow dots or something that if they get detected, they it just doesn't do it. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hope there's well, some dude out there who's just one of the richest people in the world, one of the richest criminals in the world because he counterfeits quarters and nobody gives a no shit. Gives a like nobody is paying attention I mean, to this dude who's just, paying for everything with rolls of quarters. They just changed the pound coin in England because there were so many of them were fake. It was like, we just need a really? quid. They completely well, changed my, my, they, they they rid it. All the, rid of it all. My father talks about when, when he was uh, young in Mexico that he would want a Coke from the soda machine, but he didn't have the dime for it. So he would find these like metal slugs, yeah, and then grind them down to the size of like a like a t- little ten peso piece. We or used to pound nickels with hammers, and put them in, in the, yeah, put them in the vending machine, and get cokes that way. Yeah, we used to do that. We used to pound nickels. 
I watched a, an interesting video about pounding gold down into a gold leaf. Yeah. And they just, and they can you can crush I don't know, a big block of gold into like point zero 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 one millimeter thick if you just keep whacking it. It's a gold such is such a weird metal. It's gold so is yeah, weird so pliable. Too. Like all the post apocalyptic people who and now they all believe in Bitcoin, but like they're always like buy gold because gold will always be worth something. It's like I don't know that that's true. I think gold needs civilization to be worth when, something. When the yeah. grid goes offline, how are you gonna get access to your Bitcoin? Well, the Bitcoin, yeah, that's definitely <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't even think people using stuff for to purchase. Do they use Bitcoin to purchase things? I think you can. Yeah, is it just a currency people stuff. invest in? A lot of stores you can pay with a Bitcoin. You can pay with Bitcoin. I've seen it. Yeah, like, I think Microsoft, you could buy shit with. Bitcoin. Does it work with a credit card the same way? Yeah, where you go to the payment process. I should have. You know what I should do? I should have Jess come in sometime in the in the beginning of the year and have her explain Bitcoin. I did a, a vlog with her. And she's huge into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain and all that. Here's a frustrating thing that I just ran into, Gus, because we talked at the top of the podcast. I just got a credit card shut down because of fraud, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it got shut down because somebody charged a fucking ridiculous amount of money. They charged like $1,400 against my credit card for this thing that I didn't know what it was. I I don't even know I should say the name Mm -hmm. just for security purposes, but let's just say it was Anastasia. Dot com and I was like, okay, I don't, I definitely don't know what Anastasia dot com is, so I called uh, my bank and I said, yeah, I don't, know, I don't recognize this charge, and they said, yeah, okay, great. So, well, do you have your card? They always go to that thing. Do you yeah. have your card? It's like, uh, yeah, I've got it right here. Okay, we're gonna cancel it. It's like if I say no, what they can say like, oh, we'll go find it, and that way we won't cancel <laughs> it. Uh, but they say no. I say no. I, I have the, or yes, I have the card, so they cancel it. And I go, wait a second, I just want to make sure before you cancel my card. I go, what is Anastasia.com? And they said, I, we don't know. She said, I can Google. Let me Google it really quick. And I said, no, no. What's the merchant account? Like, what do they do? Like, what's their business? She goes, I don't have that information. It's like, can you just start, like, running fucking credit cards without any kind of – because when we had to apply, I had to tell them all about our business and everything. Who are these fucking people that can just process credit cards and they can't even tell me what the type of business is? Yeah, Granted, it's probably there, a lie. There's a lot but- more, like – there's a lot easier ways to process credit cards now than there were back then. Yeah. Like you could set it's it's super easy to set up now. And but you don't have to tell them what it. kind of business you are. You lie. I mean, you can do it. I mean, you can lie, but at least it's to say, well, we make wedding cakes. Or I do, got, well, or, I only buy cakes. You do it in a country where it's less, <laughs> where it's less regulated. Yeah, and people don't give a fuck. Yeah, I got one. Uh, I had to cancel one on Thanksgiving Day. I got a text from my credit card company. I was like, "Did you just try to make a purchase for five cents in whatever something Mexico?" I was like, yeah. nope, nope, I did not. I did not do but that. How do you know that that's your Credit card company texting you. Um, I know. Okay. Enough I know. said. I know as well. Like, yeah, it's like one of those things we just don't want to go into it too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, when someone calls me uh, and they say like, oh, we detected some stuff, so I need to ask you about some transactions on your card. Uh, can you can you verify some information for me? Can you give me like whatever, last four digits of your social security number? I said, well, you called me, so – I need to verify you're who you say you are, not who I – you called me. So I always hang up and call them back. Mm-hmm. I say, just give me your 800 number. I'll call you back. Yeah, or, or lots yeah. of times what they'll say is uh, if you ask them that, they say, okay, call the number on the back of your credit card and um, you know, ask for this department mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. press this number. Yeah. It's like they, they'll always write you back through a number that you know you can trust. Yeah. Yeah, I don't trust any amount of call ever. I don't, I don't understand in this day and age why credit card – what are they called? Skimmers? Mm-hmm. Are, are still a problem. Like, I stopped using the kiosk, like the gas kiosk outside. I have to go inside the damn gas station because, I don't know, they're at least, like, a huge problem. I grab office. every like, c- credit card uh, wiggle. reader on a They're, like, an additional station. piece of hardware that people put over a credit card. I'm right. explaining for the audience. That they put over a credit card reader so that when you swipe yours, you are swiping for the gas pump in this case. But you're also – there's another thing also grabbing your card information while you're doing that. So I can, I can just grab the card thing and just yank yeah, and as long as it doesn't come in. And also there's a, a seal that should be like a little um, uh, security seal that's on the front of it. And you know okay. if it's been uh, opened up, if that seal's broken. Shouldn't worried it, I'd accidentally, like, rip off the, the real won't. reader. And I'd be shouldn't like, God, be, I did it for you. I got it. Shouldn't it be that the owner of the ATM is required to check it, like, twice a day? Like, why is it up to us to check it? What's the ATM business? I mean, like, I, there, I, there's those private uh, there's ATMs. Yeah, oh, see, there okay. you go. That's a little extra piece added on. And, and once you see it without it, it looks like, oh, that's obviously an extra bit, but... 
I don't, that would look totally normal if you walked up to it. I've also seen like the round, clear green plastic ones too. Yeah. The, we really have you? Yeah. The round, I see those round, clear plastic things everywhere. Like they're, yeah, they're, they're normal, just right? Yeah, they slop over the top. Really? It's the same shit. They just put another one on. Interesting. Uh, did, did you see that, who is it, Discover, MasterCard, and American Express are all ditching signatures starting in April? Pretty You're not going to have good. to sign for purchase with them anymore, just with visas. It's going to get to the point cool. where we don't use cards and MasterCard will be an outdated name. So we should, yeah. we, we should move to the phones. That should be the primary. And I get not everyone has a phone that's capable of like doing that little chip thing. But we got we to gotta move beyond Shouldn't cash. it be <laughs> us and not the devices? Shouldn't it be like biometrics? Yeah, but your phone, uh, go ahead. your phone does a biometric check when you do that stuff typically. A face one in this case. Sure. I think Apple put out a big thing about that. Uh, maybe today like they're, they think all credit card, like any kind of transactions like that are all going to be phased out. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 they just, make a competing standard, so of course they're going to say that. Yeah, I think they just yeah, I think they just released their their Venmo competitor too, mm-hmm. Apple Pay Cash, or whatever. Yeah, has anyone used that yet? I did. I had uh, someone owed me money. I was like, "Don't give me the money. Apple Pay Cash it to me because I want to see how this works." And how did it work? It took them forever to set it up. <laughs> it, was, it was fine on mine. Like I'd already set it up. They they're not a very technical person. It took them forever to figure it out, but they figured it out and they sent me the money. It's fine, and, and I've got it. And a how much money did Apple take? Uh, I don't know. So I've got a balance now when I look at my wallet. Where is it? Well, and it just shows you how much money you got. Have you guys left. used Venmo? Yeah. It's so screwed up to me that the default privacy settings are, hey, everybody in your, you know, your phone book, your Facebook friends can just find out whatever you're, yeah. you're spending or whatever you're paying people. And it's like. I've used it once. Well, instead of laser team, we all pitched in for something. It's not like well, a social network. Did and I not? No, you never did. The, uh, and what the, are you? I don't know. I always pay my debts. <laughs> yeah. When I but it was like Colton Dunn sent Bernie Burns 200 bucks. So I was like, Who, what the hell? It's like on my wall that people can read that. I was like, I don't want people to yeah, know that. Up. That's weird. Have you heard about, you still owe me money for that dinner we had five years ago. <laughs> Do I actually owe you money? No, you don't. Oh. Um, yeah, I just forget. I'll pay you. Anyway. Adjusted for inflation, you owe him a feast. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard Take about. Take him to the uh, Achievement Hunter Fogo dinner. It's a feature in Google Maps called Timeline. Do you know about it? No. It puts on a map everywhere you go. No. What does that mean it puts on a map everywhere you go? Like I can look at yesterday. It will show a line all over Austin where I went. How does it track you? With my phone. Do you have to look up the location? What do you mean? Or does it – like if I'm not running Google Maps, it will – can I load up Google Maps and see everywhere I was in the last week? Yeah. I can? But it depends on your setting. What you had it set to. Like I had to turn that off on mine. I was like, I don't want that. It was on by default. That's pretty That's cool. That's why I don't use Waze. Like, mine, there's no mine way Mine is to... not tracking. Yeah. And, but then I thought, maybe I should leave it on. It's like a good alibi if, I ever, if I'm ever in trouble. Well, unless you do kill somebody, then it's then, a horrible. Then you don't need an alibi. Well, I guess you need an alibi. Well, what if, but... like, I was on the suspicion of murdering someone? But what if they, you they murdered can, they that can person, They can pull though? the data from your phone anyway. They can? Yes. All right, so I don't need this. Is an I'm alibi like, yeah. something that only a guilty person could have? No, or like if they came, walked in here and said you just killed somebody in the parking lot a, a, no, a, a, an hour ago, innocent, and he, innocent if he says he has an alibi, yeah. innocent people have alibis. Well, only an innocent people yeah. have alibis. <laughs> Guilty people don't. Yeah, it just seems like if you say alibi, it immediately assumes that. And to me, it's like the assumption is you're guilty and you need an alibi. No, I feel no. like anybody could be guilty. That's the so like the dude thing. who was accused of something and then he went and found himself in Curb Your Enthusiasm at the Dodgers game. Do you remember right. that guy? Yeah, yeah. That he. Was he was innocent, right? And he had an alibi, right? Okay, okay. I don't know. Why it just yeah, seems only like... innocent people have alibis, or guilty people have crimes. Guilty people try to fake alibis, right? Yeah. You don't think right. it's a, a risk that you know if you do that and you actually do kill somebody? Well, they, they, they no can just pull it anyway. Like I said, it doesn't fucking matter. I also don't plan on killing anyone. And well, how many very few people plan on killing other people. Who has the information? Does it? Is Cell it like providers? So AT and T or like Verizon right. would just give the oh! police the information. But they just know the tower you're on, right? Or, yeah, just got a notification that present for Ash is going to be after Christmas. Oh, Uh-oh. you're screwed. I'm a little screwed. That's right. not a nice thing to say. Well, let's let's wrap this up. You can talk. We can talk about what that present is and why it's delayed in the post show. Uh, all right. So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, hope you guys have a good break. Where's Ellie? Ellie's going to pop by. Happy holidays. Happy Christmas. Happy egg.